Sup, y'all, I'll bring you guys another video. So, as we all know, Sean Porter lost to uh, Terrence Crawford by TKO in uh, round number 10 after getting dropped twice, and his dad and trainer, Kenny Porter, uh, stepped in and decided to stop the fight. Can't blame his dad for stopping the fight, uh, in my opinion. Um, with more than a minute left in the round, uh, Crawford was on his way to uh, putting on more damage and stopping Sean Porter, so I can't blame his dad for stopping the fight. Anyway, I, I know I mentioned this in the post-fight thoughts video talking about the uh, Crawford-Porter fight, but I thought I'd talk about it a little bit more about Sean Porter retiring at the age of 34. To those who don't know, right after the fight at the post-fight press conference, uh, Sean Porter announced his retirement, saying that um, win, lose, or draw in this fight against Terrence Crawford, he was prepared to announce his retirement. Uh, he said that he doesn't want to be a gatekeeper, after, especially after this fight. And, uh, you know, I can't blame him. Um, Sean Porter has always brought the fight. He's fought everybody in his generation in the welterweight division. He is an exciting fighter. He was He's always been an exciting fighter throughout his career. Uh, and a very likable guy. He's, <laughs> uh, I can't recall a single time where, you know, he said something that was insulting, that was disrespectful, that was, um, uh, you know, uh, something that would... Uh, trigger you he's always been a very likable guy he smiles a lot he he talks well um, you know if you watch all his interviews throughout the years the, the, the dude's a very likable guy and uh, you know I'm happy for him I'm happy that he decided to retire um, can't blame him I mean there's some good fights still out there obviously but uh, he's fought them all he's fought them all and if he believes it's time to rest it's it's time to rest and he seems like he's enjoying just being a commentator if you guys <laughs> If you guys have been following boxing over the past year, he's been the commentator uh, on Triller, uh, on PBC events, obviously, because he is under PBC. Uh, and he's done a very good job. And I think he has also a podcast. And, you know, he, he's done a great job doing his thing. And uh, yeah, I'm happy for him. I really am. He, even though he lost his fight, um, you know, I'm happy for, for him. He Throughout the years of watching him, um, I think he honestly, I think he deserves to go to the Hall of Fame. I think uh, he, his career, um, five years from now, I think he should be uh, part of the ballot to be in, into the Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, he only lost four times in his pro career, only stopped once, which was against Crawford, got a draw one time, 31 wins. Um, obviously, Terrence Crawford was the only time he got uh, stopped. He got a close fight, lost to Errol Spence Jr. Um, that could have gone either way uh, to some people. I thought Spence could, uh, won that fight after the knockdown. Um, the Jordanis Ugas fight was highly debatable. I thought Ugas won that fight. I thought he clearly beat Danny Garcia. Um, beat Berto easily. Keith Thurman. I would say Keith Thurman, out of all his fights in his career, Keith Thurman is probably the best fight I, I uh, from what I can recall. I think it was one of the fights of the year of that year, 2016. I think I had it as fight of the year that year. It was a very exciting fight that was. Um, man, Keith Thurman too, man. <laughs> Keith Thurman is basically retired too. Um, but yeah, man, he, he fought Keith Thurman. He fought Kel Brook. Um, lost his title in that fight. Uh, that was a close fight. It was a close fight, but Kel Brook, uh, you know, edged it. Uh, defeated Paul Malnagy. Defeated Devin Alexander. Back in 2013, became a world champion when he won. I think that was when he became a world champion, actually defeating uh, Devin Alexander for the IBF belt. That was his first time being a world champion, and uh, rightfully won that one. I can't remember when I first saw him fight. It was it was on Showtime. I can't remember if it was Phil Greco, maybe, maybe I think that was the first time. Cause I've definitely seen him fight before that, though. Uh, but it was definitely around 2010, 2011 when I first saw him fight on TV. And, uh, you know, like I said, he's always been a likable guy. He's always been a likable guy. Can't think of anything bad to say about him. And uh, definitely, uh, you know, if you break it down, his resume fighting in between those big fights, he fought, oh, he fought Broner too. I forgot about that. Um, you know, in between those fights, he fought guys like Julio Diaz, uh, Eric Bonet. Um, you know, Formella was undefeated. He, 
uh, in my opinion, definitely, definitely uh, deserves to be in the Hall of Fame ballot, at least Hall of Fame ballot uh, five years from now, and eventually be a Hall of Famer. Um, whether it's five, six, seven, eight years, uh, I think eventually he will be in the Hall of Fame. So, let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And like always, have a great day. All right, thanks.